Toasters. This past weekend, I saw my God kids for the first time in over a year. And it was a visit that was needed. It was a good visit, but it was a humbling visit also. And as I thought about it, I was like, man, this visit or the story behind the visit reflects life, reflects real, true life. And it also reflects or mirrors the law of attraction. Yeah, yeah, it was it was humbling, but I learned a lot and I'm going to share that with you. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. So yes, yes, toasters. My my god kids came over. Four or five. Have five god kids. Uh, the oldest girl uh, was off with some some other family visiting. They had some some field trip. They're gonna do so. Four of the kids uh, came over, and uh, these are toddlers. Uh, you know, the the oldest one is is four and you got a three-year-old and you got two-year-old twins yeah uh that, that we're here uh but you know the oldest oldest one uh is is uh i believe 11 and so uh four of the five were here yeah a lot right but they came over man for the first time in over a year and uh yeah it was it was humbling and i learned a lot now, let me give you a little backstory on the relationship between my God kids and myself and the God kids and Yaya and, and with everyone else, right? So, these God kids, man, they, they respect me. They love me. Uh, even if they're fighting, bickering, being disobedient to someone else, when I step in the room without saying a word, they straighten up. I've never yelled at them, never had to really get on them. You know, I talk to them, look them in the eye, I talk to them. Uh, but sometimes I don't have to say anything. They just straighten up. When people want them, when I say people, their parents and yaya, when I want them to straighten up, they say, uh, um, and they straighten up. That's the relationship. But these kids also want to constantly be up under me constantly they want to be around me more than they want to be around yaya i know go figure right like the guy that's gonna make you straighten up and act right you want to be up under you know that that's just what it is man that's been like that my whole life man since i had you know since i was young and had nephews you know i, I think i was an uncle at 12 years old and uh it just always been like that you know kids love being around me animals love being around me uh when yaya will call them uh throughout this year or these 12 calendar months and, and and call them they wouldn't even acknowledge her the first words were where's unk you know their mom says they go around the house saying i want to see unk over this last year or so and so that's the relationship. It's a, it was a healthy relationship of respect and love. But it was at that point because I spent a lot of time with them. I spent a lot of attention on them, uh, reading, going through our numbers, our ABCs, uh, going for walks, going to the park, going to get snow cones, uh, you know, celebrating birthdays, things like that. So I gave them a lot of attention. And so what they did inherently and subconsciously, they returned that. I listened to them. They listened to me. Right? Uh, I love them. They love me. I show them respect. They show me respect. I give them attention. They give me attention. That's the relationship. Now, this weekend, totally different relationship. I'm telling you, man, these, these kids acted as if they didn't know me. Man, it was humbling, and it made me really reflect about life and the law of attraction. Man, at one point, the, the, the youngest girl of the, the twins uh, was jumping on the bed. And, and Yaya, uh, I came in there, and Yaya said that the, the girl wasn't listening. She told her to get down. She won't stop. So as we usually do. In the past, Yaya would come get me 
I would show up in the room, they drop. You know, whatever they doing, they straighten up. Uh-uh, not this weekend. This weekend, I came in the room, she looked at me and kept jumping. She looked at me and smiled and kept jumping. I said, get down. She kept jumping with a smile. I was like, wow. Like, I'm looking at y'all. I was like, man, you see this? Later on, the young boy, the boy was jumping on the bed. I won't say their names. Was jumping on the bed. Told him the same thing. He looked at me and smiled. Now, this is the stuff that you would usually try on their par- parents and with Yaya, but never with me. But it's my fault. I haven't seen them in over a year. I haven't been giving them attention in over a year. And I didn't plan for that to happen. I didn't plan for it to be over a year, but it happened. And so I got to take fault for that, you know, and, and that's how it works in life, guys. That's how it works in life. Whatever you show attention to will show attention to you for better or worse. If you give it good energy, it's going to give you good energy in return. If you say you care about it or that person, they're going to give you that energy in return. That's just life. That's a law of attraction. It has to work like that. And so what they were telling me is, man, we hadn't seen you in over a year. You hadn't spent a t- uh, time or had any attention on us in over a year. We're not listening to you like that. We don't have a relationship with you like that. And that's what money is telling a lot of you guys. That's what your goals and your dreams are telling a lot of you guys. That's what your, that's what your spouses are telling you guys. They won't respond to you because you haven't been putting in the energy and the time and the attention you should have. And so you can't get the response you want to get. And this is what these kids was telling me, man. They were telling me that in their way. They were telling me that. Like, you don't have that impact on us like that. We jumping on your bed, smiling while we're doing it and ignoring you. Hey, man, it was a humbling experience. And like I said, I'm not a yeller. I'm not a whooper. Anything. So I had to, I was like, man, I had to, you know, take that. But I earned that. <laughs> I earned that, that humbling experience. I earned because I've been separated from them for over a year. You know what I'm saying? And so the thing is, man, like attracts like. Now, I know I talk about the law of polarity a lot, and that's true. The law of polarity is real. You must have a negative positive, not in a good and bad way, or protons, neutrons, uh, positive energy, negative energy, but not bad and good. You got the woman and the male, feminine, masculine, female, male. That's what that's what it is. And so you must have that, right? But that's going to get them, you know, together. But within that, you must have like uh, something that that's like it could be uh, goals, dreams, personalities, ambitions. Uh, you got the same kind of heart, maybe, or the same kind of mindset, same kind of sense of humor. But there must be a like. Although you guys are uh, have a polarity involved, there must be a like to keep you guys connected and thriving. So yes, you can have the law of polarity and the law of attraction. Also, it, it works like that. And so. I wasn't giving them what I wanted in return over the year, maybe, yeah, just over a year. I wasn't getting what I wanted. So we got reconnected and I'm expecting for us to to, to go, you know, proceed how we, we left off, how we've always been. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that in life. In anything you do, it doesn't work like that, man. If you tell money, I don't deal with you like that, money will tell you I don't deal with you like that. If you tell a child, I don't deal with you like that, consciously or subconsciously, it's going to tell you that. And that's what I was told, you know. And so you got to give attention to what you want to give. You, know, you got to give the type of attention to the things you want to give, uh, get attention from. Now, we got to be careful with that because we got to give a healthy amount of attention. You know, what you don't want to be is needy. You don't want to be in a place of neediness. Because neediness is a repellent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you can tell a person or you can show a person you're into them. You can show money and tell money you're into money. But the moment you become needy of that person, the moment you become needy of money, 
is going to repel from you. Now, I'm not saying you don't have moments of need. That's not what I'm saying. But to be needy, that's that's a position you, you've been in for a while. That's a way of life, being needy. And so as soon as you get in that role, money's going to run from you. Relationships are going to run from you. Opportunities, people, because it's not attractive. It's not. It's a repellent. Prime example, man, I know brothers have had this situation. When we were young, right, and some of you brothers are still young, but when you're young and you just be on this this cat hound mission, right, at the club or at the bar, you just you just your, your energy is off. You know, you're in this needy mode. Like I got to smash something tonight. I got to pull something tonight. Young balance, bro. You start getting turned down and rejected by all types of women. Women that you feel like should be honored, you even spoke to them. I'm just keeping it real. They're turning you down. Why? Because you are repellent. Your energy is off. You're in a, a role of neediness. It's not attractive. So you turn it, everything's turning you down. And that's when you're just like, man, it's time to go to the house. Yeah, if that's turning me down, it's, it's time to pack it up, go to the crib. That's real stuff, man. Man, you can take babies. Man, you can witness a person a grown-up who you know is well intent has well in, good intent a uh, good spirit uh good presence you know you know decent decent person man if they are overbearing <clears throat> and trying to give a baby too much attention that baby will repel that baby will come unattracted to that person it will start whining wiggling want to get away because the baby is saying man this is too much this is too much. You're, you're overdoing it. You're, you're in a state of neediness, and I don't want that. But as soon as you have a healthy relationship with that child, and you're just minding your business, doing your own thing, that child will find its way to you. It happens to me all the time, man. Babies find their way to me. Animals find their way to me. And I'm not even giving them attention like that. But they find their way to me. Because I have a healthy relationship with them. I'm sending out energy like <clears throat> I deal with y'all. I mess with y'all. I love y'all. But, hey, man, I ain't about to overdo it. I'm not chasing you. And so that's attractive. Women are attracted to that. Kids are attracted to that. Relationships, opportunities, money are attracted to a non-needy person. Yeah. So number two, create space. Law of attraction, man. To attract what you need, you have to create space. Uh, you have to, man. A lot of times, there's no room for anything to come your way because your life is not tidy. It's cluttered. So things can't come into your home. Uh, opportunities can't come your way. Uh, relationships can't come your way. Money can't come your way because you got too much going on. It's cluttered. Man, I had a lot going on during that separation from the kids. And so I said, what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> and I didn't expect for it to be over a year, but I said, I'm going to not have them come over uh, for a few months so I can focus on the book, Palmer Christie, and I can focus on YouTube. I said, I'm going to put some real time into these things because I got deadlines. And so I got to create some space to do this. And when you got five kids over, man, y'all y'all can't handle the five kids. So I gotta be, you know, present. I gotta be aware of what's going on. I can't just shut my door off and just focus on writing, right? I can't do that. But what I did, I created the wrong space. You know what I'm saying? I removed them to create space. When in actuality, I could have removed other things. You know, say outside the home, other activities I was doing. I could have removed those things so I had more time. I also could have went to their home. You know, I could have done that. So, hey, I take full blame for, for this separation, how they reacted to me. I take full responsibility. But I created space in the wrong areas. But I definitely needed to create space. And so that would cause an attraction to what I wanted with my book, with YouTube, and still kept that relationship with them. So I create a space in the wrong area. I take full responsibility. Now, number three, 
the present is always perfect. It's always perfect, man. So, like I was saying, I want to do this with my book. I want to do this with YouTube. It was perfect. I just need to maneuver and change my mentality. I, I had the right situation right there. I just had to change my mentality. But I was thinking and speaking negatively. But instead of coming from a positive perspective, I had to, I needed to change my mentality. But the present was perfect. It was. It was perfect. The, the present is so perfect that although I'm saying I should have done this and done this in the past, right now, I'm able to tell a story that's going to help someone. So I went through something that's going to help someone right now. So the present is still perfect. I can't change the past, but the present is always perfect. Like right now, even with me telling the story and saying what I should have, could have done, it's still perfect because someone's going to take this and learn from it. Real spill, y'all. Hey, man, let me know what you think. Law of attraction is real. Give energy to what you want to give energy back to you. It's real, y'all. As always, love, peace. If you enjoyed this video and previous videos, go to www.angel2angelhelp.org and donate. That's www.angel2angelhelp.org and donate. We provide services for the homeless, the mentally ill, the elderly, and the youth.